a nursery wave at the ABCA 76th Annual Coaches in Baseball Association in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Dave Parisi, and I'm with Kevin from Core 4, Core 4 Strength and Conditioning. Four locations. Where are your locations, Kev? Yeah, Middletown, East Hartford, Connecticut, uh, Trumbull, Connecticut, and Cheshire, Connecticut. And Cheshire, Connecticut. Right now, we're just showing some specific, okay, baseball moves. This is going to be more rotator cuff congruency. Kev, why don't you go through that rotator cuff move with the inertia wave, creating those oscillating waves in all these different planes. Okay, obviously, the rotator cuff, the four major muscles that hold together that deltoid group are, are firing and contracting and stabilizing, etc. neutralizing, stabilizing, going through that external and internal rotation and being challenged through that external and internal rotation, just like in any sport. Okay, nothing is ever static, nothing is ever stable in life. So we must go through these different planes and we're adding, we're just adding a challenge to that plane. Trying to keep the tube Depending on where the fist is, trying to keep the tube, you can see that the, the tube direction changes from sagittal to ipsilateral to transverse. We're going through all these motions, Kev. So think about the role of the rotator cuff when it comes to baseball. Rotator cuff is not the force producer, but the stabilizer, right? So yes, obviously the rotator cuff has a lot of left to do with rotation, but it should be more of a stabilizer. With the inertia wave, what we're doing is A, we're working on the, uh, the endurance of your shoulder, but we're also working on stability of the shoulder and the scalp, right? Your, what do we call it, talk about joint congruency. How is the ball sitting in the socket? And how are we able to maintain that stability? When the shoulder stops being doing what the shoulder's supposed to do, the elbow will become uh, hypermobile, and that creates a very big problem. So, in this position, all we're doing is working on stability and endurance for the shoulder, right? Which is obviously a huge, uh, huge factor with any sort of baseball training. Um, for that movement specifically, all we're talking about is just shoulder development. That's it. Right. And let me throw something in here. I'm thinking as you're as you're talking. So we're talking about migration here. When for for those of you watching this that train their deltoids like a bodybuilder. Okay. I mean, we all have specific goals. But let's say you're you're in sports. You're an athlete. You got to stay mobile. You got to stay stable. You want to stay strong, but if you're always counting on the outer musculature, doing side raises, overhead presses, upright rows, things of that nature, what's going to happen is you're going to lose that stability or you're going to lose the, the structure of the rotator cuff. So the, the, the glenohumeral joint, the head of the humerus, is going to migrate superiorly into the cavity, and that's going to, what's going to create a grinding or an impingement, the AC joint, right. your chromium. Get chromium rubbing. You're right, get chromium pollicular. Destroying, destroying the supraspinatus. Uh, so you have a lot of different issues uh, there that happen when we don't work stability of the joint, but we're working just force production. Right, so the exercise we just saw, Kev, by training that rotator cuff, we could actually start to move the head eventually. Mm -hmm. If we don't overpower the outer muscles like the deltoids, mm -hmm. we can start moving that head away from the, the GH joint and give that subacromial space. We can open up that space and give it more freedom, more mobility. Yes. And one of, the, one of the things that you really want to focus on there was when we were doing that, we are really trying to drop, we're creating scalpular depression, and we want to keep that scalp down as we're working. Okay, really important, he's talking about when you're doing the oscillating waves that you just saw, making sure that you're actively trying to depress your shoulder blade. It's called trap four. The trapezius starts here, occipital ridge, runs down to the spine of the scapula, comes down here. So it's a trapezoid, okay? So the bottom line is you want to take that shoulder blade and drive it down. Drive it down as you're going through that rotator cuff. You don't want to elevate the shoulder girdle and lift what's or tighten up the levator scapula or the upper fibers of the trapezius. And again, remember, this is this is all about stability. This is not necessarily mobility, right? Stability does create better mobility, but in the this is not just to work on mobility of the shoulder. This is stability of the shoulder blade, right? Once we get into this movement, this should be added into mobility type exercises that allow the scalp to move through freely through many ranges of motion. Right, and for those of you who do like to throw in those hypertrophy movements, you're going to be better at it by doing exercises like this. Absolutely. Thanks again, Dave Parisi, Kevin Dean from Core 4 Strength and Conditioning. We're here in Nashville, our booth 231 at the ABCA National Baseball Coaches Convention. We'll talk to you soon. We have some more education for all of you.